Hey, welcome back to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on compound probability. Except the only difference between this lesson and my other lesson is that the other lesson was on independent events, where one event did not affect the other, independent. This is on dependent events. In other words, the first event will have some change on the second event. Some stuff you should know are the basics of probability, what sample spaces are, how to make and read tree diagrams, and how to multiply fractions. Make sure you know these and let's get started. So what exactly is compound probability? Well, compound probability is probability that consists of what are called compound events. And a compound event is when you have more than one event where one occurs right after the other. So basically just the product of each of the individual events. And dependent events are events where the first event does have an effect on the second. You might have seen my other lesson that was on compound probability, but that was independent. It means they do not affect each other. But dependent means that the first event will change the second event. Um, and you'll see exactly how that works. So for example, let's take a look at some letter tiles. Let's say we have some tiles that spell out the word house. And we're trying to find the probability without replacement. Now, without replacement basically just means that you take out one from the first event and you don't put it back. Let's take an example. Let's say we uh, want to find the probability of getting an O from the word house and then the probability of selecting an S from the word house. We're trying to find the probabilities for each of the separate events. So what's the probability of getting O? Well, there are five letters and there's one O there, so the probability of getting the letter O is one-fifth. Now that we've uh, found the letter O, we're assuming that we've gone into the bag of letters house, we've taken out an O, and we're not putting it back. So now it's not there anymore. So now we're not picking from five letters, we're only picking from four letters. So now what's the probability of selecting the letter S? Well, there's four letters and there's one S, so the probability of selecting S now is one-fourth. Now that I've got the probabilities of my two separate events, I just multiply them. And one-fifth times one-fourth is going to be one-twentieth. So that is our probability. So here we have the word class. Same exact concept as our last example. We're trying to find the probability without replacement. And that means we're going to take out one from the first event and then we don't put it back. So let's say we're trying to find the probability of drawing two S's from the word class. Well, you might not be familiar with the way it's written like right here. You might be familiar with seeing the first event and then the word then and then the second event. So what does two S's mean? That just means we're trying to get an S for the first event and then an S for the second event. So what's the probability of selecting an S for our first event? Well, there's five tiles in the word, and there's two letter S's. Therefore, the probability of drawing an S is two-fifths. Now, remember what we said. Without replacement means that we take out whatever we said we were looking for in the first event, and then we don't put it back. So we're saying that we're going to take out one S from the first event, and we're not putting it back. So it's gone for good. Now, what's the probability of selecting an S for the second event? Well, there's four letters, there's one S, therefore the probability is one-fourth. So now that I know the probability of my first event, here it's two-fifths, and I know the probability of my second event, which is one-fourth, I just multiply them. And two-fifths times one-fourth gives us two-twentieths. But that's not in lowest terms, that can actually be reduced. So when we reduce that, our final answer is one-tenth. How about here? We have the word networks. Now we're trying to find the probability of drawing a vowel for the first event and then a consonant for the second event. So let's look at our first event, the probability of selecting a vowel. Well, how many vowels are there? E is a vowel, O is a vowel, and that's it. So that's two out of how many letters? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight tiles, so that's gonna be two out of eight. Now, it doesn't matter which vowel we select, we just have to take one out. And that's really, really important to remember. A lot of my students think, oh, well, that means I take out two. Absolutely not. You're only taking out one from the first event. And it doesn't matter which one. The one you pick is irrelevant. 
We could take out the letter E or we could take out the letter O. It doesn't make a difference. But first, let's reduce. 2 eighths reduces to 1 fourth. So like I said before, we can take out any of the vowels we want. So let's take out the letter E. And we're saying we don't put that vowel back, so that's gone for good. And now we're looking at our second event, the probability of getting a consonant. Well, how many consonants are there? Well, N is a consonant, T is a consonant, W is a consonant, R, K, and S are consonants. So that's six consonants. Out of how many letters? Well, we had eight before, but one is gone now. So we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the probability of drawing a consonant is six out of seven. And now that I have the probability of my two separate events, all I do is multiply them. And when I multiply one fourth times six sevenths, I get six twenty eighths. But that's not in lowest terms. So that can be reduced. And when we reduce that, our final answer is three fourteenths. Okay, so we're still talking about probability without replacement. But instead of talking about tiles, I'm using something a little bit more practical, playing cards. So here we have five cards. And let's say we want to find the probability of getting a red card and then a black card. Well, let's talk about our first event first, the probability of getting a red card. Okay, well, how many cards are there? Well, there's five cards. And of the five cards, how many are red? There's two red cards. So the probability of getting a red card is two out of five. Now, like I said before, we're not putting one of the cards back and we're only going to take out one of the cards. Do we take out two? No. We are not taking out both of whatever our first probability is. We're only selecting one of the red cards. So let's say we took out the king's card. That's gone now. And now we try to find the probability of getting a black card. So how many black cards are there? Well, there's three black cards. Out of how many total cards? Four. So the probability of getting a black card is three out of four. And then we just multiply our probabilities. And that's going to give us 6 over 20. But that's not in lowest terms. Therefore, we'll just reduce and get 3 over 10. And that is our final answer. How about here? We're looking to get the probability of two spades. And like we said before, you may not be uh, familiar with this notation. Here it says two spades. We're not used to seeing compound probability like that. We're used to having a first event and then a second event. Well, what exactly does it mean to find two spades? That means our first event is going to be a spade, and then we're going to get a spade for our second event. So let's talk about the first event. What's the probability of getting a spade? Well, there's only one spade here, the two of spades. And how many cards are there? There's five. So the probability of getting a spade for our first event is one out of five. And now, let's take that two of spades out. So now what's the probability of getting a spade? Well. How many spades are there? There's zero. And we're going to multiply our probabilities, and that's going to be zero, and that's called an impossible outcome. Now think about this for a second. If we get a spade for the first card, and then we took it out like we just did, that two of spades is now gone. Can we draw a second spade? No. So would it be possible to draw a spade and then a second spade after we remove that last spade? No, we can't do it. There's no way to draw two spades when you only have one. Therefore, we got an impossible outcome. In this example, we're trying to find the probability of getting three black cards. Well, like we said before, you may not be familiar with this notation, but what does it mean to get three black cards? It means we have how many events? Well, how many black cards are we trying to get? Three. So we're going to have three events. And the three events will look like this. It's going to be a, the probability of getting a black card for the first event, a black card for the second event, and a black card for the third event. So let's deal with the first event. The probability of getting a black card is, well, what do you think? There's five cards. Three are black. The club, this spade, and this club. So that's three out of five. Now let's take one of the black cards out. Because remember, we're taking out a black card, one black card, and not putting it back. So let's take out the ace of clubs and move on to our second event, which is the probability of getting another black card. Well, how many black cards are there? There's two. Out of how many? Four. So the probability of getting a black card is two over four. So let's take one of the black cards out now. And we just repeat the process. 
Now we're looking for the probability of getting a black card after that. Well, how many cards are there? There's three. And how many are black? One. Therefore, now, on the third event, the probability of getting a black card is one out of three. And then we just multiply our probabilities. Well, we can still reduce the two-fourths. We can't reduce three-fifths. That's already in simplest form. The one-third here is also already in simplest form. But two-fourths can be reduced to one-half. And then we just multiply. Three-fifths times one-half is going to give us three-tenths. And now we just multiply that with one-third. And that's going to give us three over thirty. But three over thirty can be reduced. So let's do that. And when we do that, we get one-tenth. So the probability of drawing three black cards is one-tenth. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. When you're done, unpause the video. After a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answer will be displayed. Go. All right, so let's see how we did. Number one is five over 22. Number two is one over 11. Number three is eight over 33. Number four is one over 66. And number five is three over 55. Let's review. An event that consists of more than one event or parts is called a compound event. In a compound event, when the first event does have an effect on the second, they are called dependent events. Remember, it's very different from independent events where the first has no effect on the second, such as flipping a coin. If you flip a coin the first time and you do it again, that first flip didn't mean anything. It's not going to affect your second event. But here, when we went over the tiles and taking one out and not putting it back, those are all dependent events because the second event is affected by the first. To find the probability of compound events, you have to blank the probability for each event. Well, we just multiply. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Questions? Comments? Leave them down below. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.